Hello YouTube, Dave here. This is a follow-up uh, video on my uh, jib crane. The reason I'm doing this is I watched a uh, few uh, jib crane bills on YouTube and it was brought to my attention uh, that a lot of these, some of these people say, don't do it, don't build one. It's so dangerous. But now I have to tell you, I've been uh, in the industry since uh, 68 or 69, something like that. I was young, but uh, but I actually have been building things for over 50 years. So I wanted to show you what I did. Now, this is my uh, bearing assembly, which is a uh, four inch schedule 40 pipe it's a uh, I don't know quarter inch uh, to a 5 16 wall thickness and I'm using this as my bearings and they're pieces that are about uh, one feet one foot long I have one at the bottom and one that doesn't quite go up to the top but I just wanted to show you uh, what I did was uh, I have these uh, standoffs which hold it in the X, Y uh, axis, X, Y, Z axis. This one comes straight out the top, and then this one here comes at the bottom, and you can see another one. I'll go to the other side, and you can see the other side. The uh, actual pivot point in the middle is three and a half inch schedule 40, which is four inch OD and four inch pipe is a little bigger than than uh, four inch ID. Now this is a standoff here that goes to the four inch pipe at the top. And you can see that I left a little, uh, I'm gonna say eight inches of, uh, of the three and a half inch schedule 40 sticking out at the top. And, and I noticed some of, uh, well, most of the jib cranes that they've been building, they're basically, mostly, just supported straight out. Now, I didn't do that. I actually used uh, two inch 120 wall uh, stringers, or uh, dog legs, hypotenuse, whatever you wanna call it, pieces out here that are full welded all the way around. Now, as you can see, I did put holes in it. Some people say, well, that would make it weaker. And, and it probably does, but this is so strong, uh, I know it'll pick up a couple tons. Now, this one, sorry, sorry. I have welded up here, uh, close to the very top. Now, the pipe, the three and a half inch sked 40, is capped on both ends and I did put holes drilled holes now these aren't just holes that are drilled in they're uh, actually uh, drilled out and they have a uh, piece of uh, inch and a quarter schedule 40 welded inside so they're not as weak as they look. And, and I, I'll tell you the truth, they are just for looks. I like holes. And I know that uh, each one of those two inch uh, square tubings will probably hold uh, 5,000 pounds or more. This is my scaffold right here. And this is warehouse rack. These beams are made out of uh, 14 gauge the the uh, frames which is is the ends of them and I'll tell you I'm having a hard time seeing here okay you can see it now the beams are the uh, horizontals and the frames are the verticals I actually worked at the manufacturer that built those I actually built these back in the 70s built them to a specific size that I wanted 
and these these um, warehouse rack are rated at 10,000 pounds now that's 10,000 pounds and it's it's uh, made out of I think it's 16 I think that's 16 gauge and the frames right here made out of 12 gauge so you can see this is this is pretty thin stuff all of my uh, my two inch tubing is 120 wall which is heavier than any of my rack and so I, I know the ratings of these I just wanted to go th over this with you uh, because I see people on YouTube now they build their jib cranes but they don't put these diagonals on them. My diagonal, uh, this one here goes up um, probably four feet from where the horizontal actual uh, I-beam that the trolley roll, rolls off of goes up close to four feet up there and it's got one piece that goes all the way to the end and I measured right in the middle and this one comes up right into the middle which is probably unnecessary but uh, like I said I like to make things uh, extra heavy duty and this right here there it is you can see now this is the uh, one of the supports for the bottom it goes down welded to it and you can see it's got one over there so this thing is really way over engineered and I'm gonna say generally speaking compared to most of them that's built on YouTube I've watched these guys they're very professional they have their own welding shops their own fabrication shops and they're rating theirs at 500 pounds and stuff which uh, like I said I'm rating mine at a thousand it'll probably pick up 4,000 pounds but my point is I've been welding since uh, the late 60s and when you do this stuff you're not practicing with your welding it's, you really have to have to know how to weld and, and I'll tell you the truth what, the way I welded it is a lot of people would even say that's not right but I used all 6011 the reason I use 6011 it's a high penetration rod now I have 7014 or uh, excuse me 7018 which is your uh, a really strong rod and people would say structurally that's what you got to use but uh, I've worked a lot of places welded a lot of places and I can tell you uh, when you engineer and you design things with your triangles the the way you engineer it you engineer strength into it so it's not all just the weld now you got to weld it right you have to weld it right and, and I like the, uh, even if you're going to use 7018, you're going to have to use your uh, 6010 or 6011 uh, uh, root rod to run your root pass and clean it up and run your 7018 over the top of it. In this case, uh, I uh, didn't run any 7018 over it. I just ran my uh, 6011. I've, uh, I've been retired here about eight years now. And uh, believe it or not, I've went through about uh, 250 pounds of rod here in my backyard building stuff and I'm 250 pounds of 70 or 6011 I have welded some uh, 7018 I do weld some stainless and uh, it's the same way with the trailer when you uh, build a trailer it's it's not for beginner welders you have to already know how to weld and uh, my trailer it will all be welded with uh, with your uh, 6011 I I also now I'm old school I uh, only got an arc welder I got a TIG welder do a little TIG welding scratch start but mostly I, I arc weld everything and uh, I just didn't like uh, wire welding back in the day. I think the last time I was actually uh, uh, did anything with wire welding was back in the 70s. 
And uh, it was in a production shop, got to tell you. I, I just uh, said uh, it's not for me. I mean, I know it's the easiest way to weld, and you could learn the quickest, but uh, I just like the artistic part of uh, welding with a uh, electrode with the rod. You control it, you control your puddle, you control how you weld. You can weld just about anything with it. And uh, I just wanted to share that with everybody because I did see, uh, I, I just finished watching a few YouTube channels on, on uh, jib cranes. And uh, some of these guys, I know they were machinists or, or engine builders or, or, or whatever they did. And I, I'm actually a fabricator. It's what I did was I built stuff out of uh, some structure, a lot of machine equipment, a lot of stainless, different things. But this is, but I built things all my life. And so I really know how to, how to handle the, the, uh, the electrode. And um, also the engineering, I found a, this, uh, my I-beam here, if you look at it, looks pretty scary. Let me see if I can find it here. Can you see that? Looks like one of the wheels, maybe only on there about a half inch. And also, uh, my friend, in order to, uh, I went over to buy it, I wanted to buy an I-beam, and he said, oh, well, I want to sell you this, and I gave, so uh, this is actually formed up uh, 10 gauge. This is 10 gauge that's been formed uh, into channel, welded together, and I looked at it and I said, well, you know, I, I don't think that's strong enough. So what I did was I got a piece of uh, two inch, uh, quarter inch flat bar, welded it to full length. And I could tell you one thing about, uh, from an engineering standpoint, standpoint if you uh, weld two pieces the, together, which you could probably, my, I skip welded it. I probably did about two inch uh, stringers uh, eight inches apart all the way down on both sides and what that does from a structural point of view is it puts two pieces of metal together and they're not as strong as one piece that thick they're actually twice as strong or or they would be rather than twice as strong as one piece when you got two of them if you have twice the thickness make it twice as strong when you weld two pieces together you actually make it three times stronger than the one piece would be and the reason for that is once they're welded together and I, I'm not saying full welded it's just uh, skip welded uh, what happens is the welds won't let that metal move so if you have any bending action or anything one side has to stretch and the other side has to shrink in, in other words you got compression and tension in both pieces up there and from a structural standpoint it's going to make it three times stronger than if you just made it twice as thick and so i figured with this since i'm only uh uh going to pick up a thousand pounds i i would say this thing will still pick up uh uh four thousand pounds i'll bet it would the only uh limitation on this is if it swung out all the way to our side of the trailer i would have to put an outrigger on it which I already thought about. That's the only weak point of my whole uh, uh, jib crane setup here. And actually, I have a uh, my receiver right here. And I was thinking about uh, building an outrigger that would come out to here for this side of the trailer. Because when the, uh, the, the, the jib crane is swung out straight from the trailer. It has the whole trailer holding it. When it comes out on this side, then it just has one side. And what I did, I actually did this, and it did work. If you look down here, I put a piece of uh, three inch tubing underneath. Uh, this is my uh, uh, blacksmith post vise uh, support for the foot. And it would just barely fit. And when I pick something up and swing it out here, this uh, piece gets captured, it will not move. So this is actually acting like an outrigger, but I think maybe in the future, if I'm going to like take this out to the shows or something, I might build a longer outrigger for right here, just to uh, support the, the crane.
crane having extra weight on it. But but like I said, I only got a uh, a thousand pound trolley and a thousand pound chain hoist, so we can't pick up more than a a thousand pounds and besides that I don't want to pick up any more than 800 like I already have picked up 800 and it works just fine well if you uh, like this video <laughs> uh, click the like button and uh, leave a comment below thanks bye